Well, I'm not going to be able to get the old girl out for a while. Still pretty breezy, easterly winds. It's all there, so this is going to be one that I've got to get a couple of jobs done first before I even go fishing. I don't even know where I'm going to go. I don't think I'm going to go sea fishing. Maybe, maybe I can grab perhaps an afternoon on a local canal. That's what I'm thinking of anyway, but I haven't even got any bait. Jobs are going to be done first, people, and one of those jobs is, wait for this, it's actually a chimney sweep. Now, you guys out there to follow me know I do anything. I do all my own property maintenance. I've done 50 years. Just keep doing the same old thing each year. Work, work, work. So. I've got to get out my drain rods, screw them together, get a special brush attachment because I'm going to climb onto the top of my roof, totally unaided. It could be on national television. Pensioner climbs the top of roof, hopefully not falls off. And I'll show you what I do for cleaning my chimney. If I get this job done, then I'm going to get some tackle. I'm going to try and go fishing. In amongst the great junk room here, the great store of everything, I have Oh, somewhere. Don't, oopsie, don't let Michael see that tar pool and that'd be going down the cap. Load of drain rods. These same drain rods like this, screwed together, I will show you, and I use them for going on my roof and sweeping the chimney. Now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. They are one meter long and uh, screw them all together. I'll show you what I do. They're very, very short, what I call a short thread on them and use them in drains, but I double up and use them in my chimney as well. Let's get the brush. My workshop is an absolute mess at the moment. And a hint of what we do is, yes, tons of wood shaving. So you know, looking at the floor, there's been some bushcrafty stuff for Mike's TA Outdoors channel. But up here, oh, amongst the rubbish, I've got the brush. A pair of gloves, a ladder, and ooh, off we go. Look at that, handcrafted, this axe on the left here, handcrafted from Cherrywood by a carpenter master. Now, I'm going up onto the roof here, risking life and limb. Don't do this, kids, please don't do this. I'm doing my own chimney. And the chimney up the top there is the one I'm going to be hopefully cleaning. So you can see here, people, I've got a standard log burner. I've cleaned it all out of the ash, so when you burn, you actually do get ash here. But of course, through the vent in the back and up the chimney, you do get tar and ash deposit going up there. Also, you can see here, it's just starting to fray after a season, which is this was put in about end of September, October for the winter season. It wears along here and I want to reseal that. And I've got here the new rope and the glue to go with it. So that's an extra job, but I'll just get in the chimney swept today and then I will clean this out and reseal that. Part of the fun of having a log burner now, something you must do, which I just nearly, so nearly forgot, close the door because I'm going to be ramming that brush down the chimney pipe. Make sure that's locked. Make sure this vent here is closed. You want everything sealed up so any dust or soot that comes down just collects in there in the bottom and not in the house. Back there is the pipe. That is a stainless liner that goes all the way up. I've actually got 17 feet of chimney there, so I've got to get up on the roof 17 feet, about 20 feet I guess to the base, and um, get a pair of pliers here first. Want some long nose ones I think, uh, maybe, maybe I'll take the ordinary, oh there we go, long nose pliers, snip snip. Now, get myself a pair of gloves. Now the brush goes on the end of this thread, and I'll show you what I mean by it being a a quite shallow thread. You see there's only about two or three turns on it. So it screws on, obviously one way, yes. I'm going to say clockwise. I do it up tight. <clears throat> and this applies to drain rods if you're, if you're clearing drains as well. When you screw this up like this, it's very easy when you put it down the drain with the various clearing implements on the end. You're ramming it backwards and forwards down the drains or indeed the chimney this can start to come undone and you don't realise it. So what I do is, if I'm going down a drain or down a chimney, as I'm pushing, I'm rotating clockwise to continually keep these joints together, not loose. If this breaks down, or doesn't break, comes unscrewed, down a chimney or down a drain, trust me, it's a camera job and a very, very expensive extraction. So, don't put the rods together when you go on the roof, or I don't. I'm no chimney sweep, I've just been doing it for about 20 years. 
I'm not going up on a three-storey building, I'm just going up on my own where I feel safe. Or a safe fish. Let's make a space there. There we go. So these rods are a metre each. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six threes are 18 feet and I'm 17 feet off the ground. Away we go. With care, I hasten to add. OAP climbs on roof. Wow, that's a long way up, Graham. Oh, I can clean all the gutters as well. That's another job I do on my own. Up the ladder, clean the gutters. Oh, I've got trainers on, not great big steel toe caps, because these tiles, and I walk very, very slowly up here. Do not do this, or I don't do it. I'm not saying go and do it yourself, I'm just saying I do my own house like this. There's the old satellite as well. Quite a view. So I lay these across here because I don't want them falling down. This, I guess, could be brushed off, but you can see here, just out of interest, the tar deposits around there. So I'm going to bend these hooks back. I'm going to call this a spark arrester that's up here. I don't actually know. Here comes the wife's just come back from shopping. I don't actually know what the proper term for that is, but it looks like a spark arrester to me. There we go. I just I could bend these back and take them off the loop that holds them on, but to be honest, I can't really be bothered because these are long ones are more difficult to fold. I had air vents put in the uh, tiles here as well. Make a good deer hide up here. Now, let's make sure everything doesn't roll away or go downhill. All around there is where the tar comes out of the wood when, it, when, it, when it's hot. I'm just doing this to show you. There we go. See it chipping off? Now, if it gets very, very hot, this could catch, the actual tar could burn inside the stainless pipe that goes down in the middle there. So that's what we don't want. And that's why we sweep the chimney once a season. Here's the brush. Up and down we go. Most of the soot will be down near the bottom end. But you see, I'm turning it as I go. All those who tuned in now think, this is the weirdest fishing rod this dude's got. He's pushing a fishing rod down a chimney. But I've got to do this job before I go fishing. And people keep saying, we love seeing what else you do, Graham, other than fish. Of course I do things other than fish. I have the same jobs everybody else has to do, except I do extras because I, I do things like my own chimney. OK, now the brush will hold that there. You can, if you want, oh, lean these because the last thing you want to do is look down, you can't reach the next one. You let go here and, ah, it slides down. Okay, let's put that one there. So you just work your way down the chimney, twisting as I go so that I continually get this, this joint here stays tight. That's how I've done many, many drains on properties. And that is the safest way to do it, I find. And if you wonder, I've put these down sewer pipes. Don't worry, just clean them off with uh, some bleach water. And hopefully you don't pick up any nasties. On goes the next one. Screw together. Obviously, people who live in a town and cities, they go in, wow, I've never been up on top seeing a chimney before, but this is what happens. This is what you have to do annually. You can pay a chimney sweep to do it. I don't know what they charge. I guess the average 2019 would be, I don't know, 70 pounds. I can do my own for 70 pounds and then spend 70 pounds on my fishing boat for a day's fishing. And if I can do jobs myself, trust me, I won't be paying anybody. I normally do this in the peak summer and I thought, you know what, it's so dry. 
why don't I do it as soon as I finish the last burn of the winter season, almost a celebration. And it's done, isn't it, eh? It's done. Ah, there's the bottom, just there. That's exactly at the bottom of the chimney, so that should have pushed down the outlet pipe of the stove and all the soot will hopefully be right in the bottom of the container that is intended for the base soot to go to. I don't want to get stuck down there. And there we come. And it comes, and it is, if you can see that powdery residue there, powdery. There's the soot coming out of it. And that's where I've got the gloves. This is very difficult to get off of clothing. Don't tell the wife I'm wearing my Sunday best. Here's my trusty friend that I've come to visit. Oh, it's land. Wow, that is, that is a long way down for an old boy. That's my weather vane. And of course, it is a man fishing. And what I want to see is the wind from that direction, southwesterly. Be very happy with a mild southwesterly wind. Currently, there's no wind, but it would be just off the north. And of course, now I'm up here, I realize this chap, he needs painting, so I better take him down, give this coat of paint while I'm down there. Well, I'm just gonna knock off the worst of this tar, as it were, with the wire brush on the end of a cordless. We go cleaned up as best I can get it slotted over the clips there I'll tell you what there's a lot of lead flashing around here boys that's living dangerously I could end up in the lead melting pot and as a fishing wait it's gonna close that down that stops it blowing off and then I'll show you, you think, I've actually sort of seen nothing, Graham. Just seen an old man on the roof, hanging precariously from a chimney. Well, I'll show you what all that brushing did down below and why I kept that log burner door shut. So once I get the plate out there, I've got two fire bricks here, which have to come out this. Be very careful where you put them. I'm going to move them up there because they will have soot on them. Sometimes they're a bit tight. And then I've got the odd nail here. Now comes the nasty bit. The sleeves are rolled up because down through there is the actual sort of chimney bit and that is going to be, I'm going to try and show you if I can, Gonna get one go at this. Look at all that soot. Absolutely black. And there's tons of it. I can no way afford to get this all on the carpet. So that shows you. Oh my god, look at it. Gonna be breathing it. Put my mask on, I think. There is a ton of it. Just to give you an idea how much is here, look. I don't want to spill this on the carpet. You can see that there, absolute, a shovel full of fine soot. And that has all come down the stainless steel outlet pipe from where I was sweeping the chimney. So that one small brush, you can see, has knocked all this down. If I can get this out, I can replace the two fire bricks, the sort of baffle at the back. Look at that lot. It's very good for the garden, they tell me, this lot. Scatter it over the garden. There's almost a bucket full of soot. Well, I think you can see, I was wearing green gloves and they now turned into, oh dear, black gloves. Right, final 
final journey up the ladder. And not many people go up the ladders fixing weather vanes either. It's a double whammy. Chimney sweeping and leather vane fitting. We can start a whole new business. Careful boy. I've got what oil in there. Wouldn't be up here if it's windy either guys, that's another thing. I want to tip some of that oil. Yes, it comes out and goes over the top. There. We. And there we have it. All done. Ready to point. Which way? Southwest. That's the way I want it. Because now I get to go fishing. Well, thank goodness I got rid of that dirty, filthy chimney sweep job. Work hard, play hard. That's the hard work out of the way. Now, here comes the play hard. Well, it's not going to be play hard today, boys. As you can see by my surroundings here, I'm on a canal, barely moving. There's a bit more upstream wind than I would have liked, but I don't think I'm going to go float fishing. I have got two Avon rods with quiver tips, and I've got one float rod. I've got a pint of maggots, and I've got some worms I managed to dig when I was doing the garden yesterday after I did that chimney sweeping job. So I just want to catch anything. I, I haven't been since, man, months, course fishing. I haven't been for months. And here we are, it looks like a beautiful day, not the best for fishing, obviously. Bright sunshine, all anglers know, oh dear Graham. But I might stay on to the late afternoon, evening. However, the first thing I'm gonna do is get some ground bait in the water because there's probably not been a lot of people fishing on here, so I think I've got to get some feed in first, then I'll sort my gear out, then I've got to go and get some photographs done, you know, photography, scene setting, that type of thing. But at least the bait's working. My downside is I was going to fish down here, even without my polarising glasses, which I was going to wear, I can see there's snags in the water, there's branches. I think the club must have been further up there by the lock and cleared some rubbish out, quite a lot of rubbish. There's a stick sticking up out here in the water. I don't need to get a fish wrap around there. There are no real big fish in here. They get a few big carp, of course, always big carp somewhere. Um, but I'm after, I'd like to catch to show you a fish called a ruff, R-U-F-F-E. It's like a perch. It's really quite, I think it's quite rare now. When I was a kid, we used to catch them, but that's 60 years ago. Um, might get a perch, and there are some quite big perch in here. Uh, skimmers, maybe rudder, don't know, roach certainly. Um, we'll give it a go and I'm going to go quite as light a feeder as I can. Let's get some bait in the water. Now this canal fishing is different to normal fishing. You need a lot less feed and you need finer feed and, I, and I, although I don't go buying it all, maybe some of that perfume matchman's type bait, you know, with different attractants in it, probably would give you the edge today. A matchman would do much better than me on here today. But I'm going to give it a go with what I've got, which is the good old Bailey's number one. I've even got, wait for this guys, I've got some wheat bix there I might, I might not use. And you can see that the mice have already been in there eating my wheat bix That was an out of date one the wife gave me. So I'm going to mix a bit of bait up first and put a little bit of feed in. I've got some pellets as well. So what I've done, I've got a mix of, you can actually see the grate of it there. We haven't mixed it up properly. Bran and Bailey's horse feed. This is all horse feed. My basic ground bait, I'm going to shake a, a good bit in there. Yeah, probably a tad tad more than that. In fact, the, oh, go on, Graham, go for it. I've got spare in there. And somewhere, I've got some pellets. Just regular coarse pellets here. They're going to go in as well, a couple of handfuls of that. Because I'm not, I haven't got a lot of, with a pint of magazine and a few worms. That's basically my hook bait, but I will catapult some of these in loose. It might bring fish up in the water and then I can go float fishing. So at the moment, I'm mixing all this up with a view to using swim feeder on the bottom. <coughs> a bit dusty. Oh God, now I can get everywhere. Always make sure, guys, you bring a towel. Okay, sleeves up. Let's mix this up. And do not over-wet it. 
all ground baits don't over wet it as the old saying goes you can put it in water but you can't take it out oh dear that's my clean trousers done so you just damp it first because what happens is not so much the bran but the uh, the Bailey's feed I use like it's like a crumb uh, that takes a while to soak up so I try and get it almost just damp most matchmen do not fish with a wet ground bait they fish with a damp ground bait they want it just holding in the feeder and they want it coming out I may have put a little bit too much bran in here now tempting I can feel this see look it won't quite bind up yet but listen it's only a canal I'm only going to the probably fish the middle line there I'm going to bait two swims up or two areas I'm going to let that soak while I egg my rods up I've probably hardly any space to put your chair here I guess about I guess about here there's a branch hanging over the back there probably going to fish just out here and throw one long down there so I'll be waiting sort of two swims it's tempted to fish out in front of me I may even do that I may even put my chair up here a bit more space somebody obviously is a, fishes as a swim there my chair here and fish just in the middle there but I, I definitely need to throw one down there probably move I always move I can never settle that's a problem I get bored quick right rods together here we go guys here we go first one of the day no not the fish the canal boat first cast well people you can see it you won't see it here but it's muddied it up over there which possibly might not be a bad thing so although I've had to wind in there might actually be something stirred up I wonder if those fish are going to feed after boats gone through just talking to a gentleman who carp fishes here and he said he has noticed the carp do come out after the uh, boats have gone through let's find out I think I'm going to move my rod rest back here somewhere I bought a little short barbel rest I haven't got any big ones so I'm going to sort of balance the rod there well boys I've been here 11.30, 12.30 been here an hour I've had one bang on the lobworm or it's not quite a lobworm small worm earthworm I would say a couple of little quivers small fish bangs on the quiver tip on the maggots here I had three maggots on and then I've gone down to two maggots I haven't gone down to single maggot yes but I feel that's coming so very small fish I was standing talking to a gentleman I saw about got about two years ago he was catching perch here and uh, he was looking for carp as well and he was telling me these very very hard carp I think he said there's three thirties in here in this canal and uh, there was I think one shoulder three fish one shoulder six fish so man that must be some hard carp fishing mustn't it I've got my microphone lead right across the towpath imagine if I get a cyclist come down here <laughs> he's choked choked and dragged down the path so I've baited up just down here I'll just show you I'll chuck some in here because he did tell me sometimes you get perch right right on the inside so I thought well I'll just keep a little bit of feed like that going in there and I'll get a float I can lower it there because these guys pole fish they fish with a pole it's so delicate the presentation hook sizes the main line the leader everything's down you know the nylon uh, finer bait uh, a, a, what I call a, a very fine powdery feed as well to get the fish going so my way of fishing here throwing out swim feed is yes yeah, okay for barbel and chub stuff like that carp but if you want to catch small silverfish like this not really the most efficient way but it's ideal for float fishing now that wind's eased off a tad I can leave my lobworm down there my earthworm down that way I think I'll put the match rod together and have a go float fishing right no do it Graham it's so nice here guys I'm gonna end up falling asleep in the sun well the other guy stopped way way down there looking at the carp he saw nothing up here a gentleman came past and another angler said move down there by those willows but there's hardly anywhere to sit that's the trouble you can see where I am so I'm going to get rid of my mouse chewed there you go shredded wheat no I'm not going to eat them I'm going to get rid of them and pound them into that swim now normally 
on a canal they say don't overfeed it but I don't know nobody's nobody's fed it have they you know that's the thing there's not been many anglers feeding here so I'm going to do some of this ancient shredded wheat here crumble it up and put uh, a bit of my ground bait with it to bind it let it soak and then I'm going to chuck a load of it in there and even if I don't uh, try it for say two three hours there might be something going to pick up on it who knows put a bit of uh, feed here and that's mostly bran I don't think we've got too much actual ground bait left thinking of it maybe I've used it all I'm trying the flow I'm getting no bites on it and the wind is driving me to distraction so I'm crumbling this up give it a soak I've no idea whether it's it, this would catch in a carp water definitely get them feeding let's get that soaked and leave it for a bit it might be bindable to to at least be able to get it tight enough to throw who knows probably takes a bit of soaking actually Yeah, I think I've had a couple of, of real perch bangs on that worm and nothing's come. I don't think they're anything but perch. I might be wrong, there might be some big perch in here. I'm just trying to drain this off now. I don't want to use all my pellets because although they will swell up there, I might want those for loose feed. There we go. It seems to be slopping up pretty good I do like a bit of slop I'll eat anything a little bit more brown in there actually there's some baileys in amongst that so I can see it's white we're only after a few small fish not a lot to ask of is it really I'll put a few maggots in there might uh, evoke some interest I could probably reach that from here actually to be honest but I think I'm going to throw it in down there I'll wind these rods in and move down there right I'm going to be using uh, a ground bait catapult just more for accuracy it's going to give it a try always make sure you just wet that pouch before you uh, catapult it doesn't hopefully stick to it let's see where this one goes I'd like to say perfect, but I'll be honest, I have no idea. I'm just going to be trying something a little bit different. There's got to be some sort of fish under those features. I just feel. And there's a, there's a centre line that's a little bit deeper by six inches. It must be where the boats go through. I don't know, this is just how you don't normally feed a canal stodge but who knows I've caught nothing to f so far so I figure I sort of got nothing to lose and basically it's a packet of mouse chewed Weetabix God, you can stick planks of wood together with this stuff If there's any fish come, they'd be, mm, I can't breathe. They'd be stuck together their mouth. So I'm just putting the camera up on a pole so you can see, hopefully, down there there's some uh, sticks and stuff. But if I, if I alter the camera angle, and I, if I alter the camera angle and walk around here, and get the angle of the sun behind me you'll probably be able to see there's a dark spot there and that dark spot could be a tree branch it's got weed on it anything so i don't need to go winding a fish into that should i get a bite so you've got to be aware of that and a lovely setting i think you'll agree up there way up in the distance is the lock Nice to have a house just there. If I lived in that house or that boat, indeed, I would be pre-baiting every night. And then back down the other way, 
way, way in the distance for that bend, before the canal goes away on the bend, as the guy cart for you on floaters. Fishless at the moment. Well, wouldn't you just know it? I put all that ground bait down there, came back, had a throw out, and I got rud, roach, a small fish. I've saved the blank. My God, I've saved the blank. It's got to be better than sweeping that chimney, I know. This one is, I'll still show the folks at home, a rud, lovely little rud there. I mean, if you're pike fishing, oh dear, that would be probably a one-way ticket as a dead bait. But maybe the fish are coming on here. I put all the ground back down the other side and I shouldn't be moving. Could be a time of day thing. Who knows? Maybe I'll give it half an hour here, have some lunch and then move down there. But blanks out the way, feel a bit better. I'm on a waggler float. I'm on a self-loaded waggler float and tangled as usual. Two maggots on a size 16. Right, let's get it out there again. Maybe, maybe we get lucky, get a nice perch. It's a lovely day. Out we go. Winds come up. The minute I change to a waggler, I think, oh, nice delicate presentation. I'll catch a fish. You anglers know it. Yeah, that's right. Here come the wind. Right, boys, sandwich time. Oh, I'm in again, boys. This one's a bit different. This is, wait for this one. That was catapulting. As soon as the wind drops, I could get that float to go through. This one there is a roach. Total contrast. I'll put it the right way so the beginners see the difference between the roach and a rud. It hasn't got quite so much orange fins, red fins there, but that's a nice one. So, sort of saved, saved the blank <gasps> twice. A roach and a rud. And that was, I can tell you, the tiniest, tiniest bite. You can doubt the seal the, if I hold that camera still, you can see all the, the big pools of mud it stirs up. It's only barely about four feet, even in the middle. I put a plumb bob on, I plumb the float there, it's only about four feet. So every time a boat goes through, it stirs up. So that's that centre channel, which should be a little bit deeper and cleaner from rubbish, hopefully. Hopefully, you never know. But we all have to use the waterway. Fingers crossed, it's even sparked the fish up a little bit. Well, I shall that yet again. I've got another small fish on, show you this one, looks like a looks like a daze, but in fact, I used to catch loads of these in the River Thames years ago. That's a bleak, quite a big bleak actually, if you hold still. Great pipe bait, that's a bleak. And they used to be really plentiful years ago, not so much now. They're still third species, and I'm just about to move. Well, I've moved down to the red hot swim that I've put a load of bait in and caught. Nothing. The other gentleman was fishing up there, way up on the bend. He actually hooked a carp about 12 pounds, I think. Got it on floating bed casting, went straight in the snags and busted him off, and he's on like 12, 10, 12 pound line. That's a shame. I knew he'd seen carp up there because he was there for about an hour and a half. So when people aren't moving, you're pretty sure uh, they're catching fish. But I'm thinking there's two things I haven't done. One is, if you're a bit superstitious, I like to dip my net twice before I start fishing. I haven't done it, I could do it in a minute. Also, should I put my polarizing glasses on? It's not that glary, but it might be good luck. Dip the net, put the glasses on. Oh, that's better. Now I can see all the fish that I'm not catching. Lucky hat. Only thing left. Right, now, maybe I'm gonna try float fishing on the outside of that snag. I've been pinging maggots out there and uh, two mill pellets just pinging, pinging, pinging. I wonder if there's any perch or anything around the outside of that snag. And the other guy said, you should put your glasses on, you can see the snag. I did see the snag, I said, 
I know it's there, but maybe I'll get some bites now. Got another small one on. I don't know, this is a bleak, a roach, a rud. It's a roach. A tad bigger, not much, but basically, man, it is tough, tough, tough. The other guy's gone home, the cart man. So I've got a roach here. So I suppose when you think about it, dipping the net twice, putting the Polaroids on, and putting the lucky hat on, well, it didn't do any harm, did it? Even if you're not superstitious, it's worth doing. On the worm for perch, nothing. Well, we've got another species. It is indeed a perch. I'll show this one to you. Let's come up here with that. Not on the lobworm. <laughs> Not exactly a big perch, is it? We used to catch these as kids. That's what we cut our teeth on years ago. Almost a bent pin and a bamboo stick. There we go, so there's a perch. Got a little baby fin on him somewhere. He's so small, there's his fin. Pretty little chap. And that was on double white maggots and the float, ironically. Nothing, put him back. Nothing over there on my oh, lobworm, so I just keep working away, but the wind is such a pain. I just cannot, cannot get the float to go through at the right pace. It's really pretty frustrating, and the fish is not wild, it's not exactly on fire, but it's a great day, and at least I'm scratching something out. Well, starting to get a few fish. Roach now, people. I think this is a roach. That's a better fish. The other guy's saying they couldn't catch any decent sized roach, but I've shallowed up, I've gone to look. There's the float. There's the float, there's the fish, maybe two feet deep. I might, might have stumbled across something. And a big plump roach there. So is it all gonna turn around for me with the lucky hat, the lucky glasses, and the dipping of the net twice to the west? Hopefully, it might be that, and loose feeding all the time. I think it might, might be the depth, so let's get out there again. I've assumed, actually, that just tripping across the bottom is where the bulk of the fish are going to be. And I've seen one or two other fish come up, just dimpling on the surface, just making a very, very slight dimple on the surface. And as I ping in six or eight maggots, it seems like I get a bite straight away and then they're gone. So I think, are they eating those maggots as they're sinking? Mine's left and they go, ah, oh, they can see that. There's one or two on the hook. So we'll find out in a minute anyway. Nothing on the worm. I've got a really big strangling great big lobworm on there. But I think I'm going to uh, take that off and put a smaller worm on and send it right down by that willow tree. I might have one more long cast with that uh, big lobworm on. And now, because I've said shallowing up's away, I can't get a bot. Oh, missed one. Back to the jumbo bleak, people. You just keep altering the depth all the time. That's pretty big for a bleak. Fishing doesn't look too bleak either. Right, well I've packed up people, put the gear in the car and I've now come up fishing uh, for a few casts just to see if I can pick anything out and I've got a lure on for a big perch. It's just a one-off chance, it's a weedless lure. Gonna have 10 minutes here and then I'm gonna have to go and find somewhere else maybe tomorrow evening where I can uh, actually catch something large. That's the theory. I'm using a sidewinder weedless lure, wait for this, on a quiver tip rod, because that's all I've got. But I might luck out with a perch. I had more bleak up there, and then it went, you know, very, very quiet, so I thought, you know what, go and pack up. So I'm just having a throw on the downstream end of it. A lot of rubbish here. And then you, know, you never know, might get lucky. But I'm going to try, I've got a few jobs to do tomorrow and then I'm going to see if I can't stop somewhere tomorrow evening for a couple of hours. In which case I shall take the camera and you guys along with me. Too much weed here I feel. There's a lot of weed floating on the surface, I assume chopped up by the boats. There's a few few throws around because you never know where those perch will be. Funny day today, very peculiar weather, it's hazed right over with that easterly wind bringing in all this cloud level and I don't think that uh, 
is any good for the fishing at all. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's why I didn't get any skimmer bream or bream. I'll give this 10 minutes, which in my case is 15 minutes, isn't it? Let's face it. And then I'm on the on the road home. I'm only going to sit in a traffic queue anyway. Better for these sidewinders, they are weedless. And in the summertime they will be pretty good. They're not the best hook up because they've got a big single hook on them. So not the best for hooking up fish, but sea fishing obviously, you've got to have it. Yeah, there's lots of bits of weed here. Fish on, guys, 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 fish on, I've got a fish on. Someone's just, someone's just nailed me. What is this? Is there a huge perch if it's a perch? Oh my God, am I going to save it? Am I going to save the day? Am I going to save the day? Oh my God. Oh my God. Is this a big perch? It's not bouncing around. It's taking me up into the lock. Or whatever it is. Oh, I see it's a pike. Oh, I'd love to get this one out. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It was just a hunch to come here, guys. Just a hunch. We haven't got the fish yet, but at least I could save the day. Well, well, well. Wouldn't you just know it? As I was saying, he's absolutely digested that lure. And he's in. Oh, yes. Totally awesome strikes again. There we are, people. Nick my thumb there, but there's the pike. And let's just get this one back. Well, you know the last cast? Yeah, that's right. It's going to take a bit of time. It's going to take a bit of time. I'm sort of bunny hopping it now because I figure there's some mud there. The trouble is, it all looks fishy. Especially down that side there. That just goes to show you that versatility pays off. Just keeping one lure in my box, even though I wasn't even thinking of a pike today. Lucky to get it out, because I've got my perch lure on a bit of braid there. So, result. So, I figure I've uh, had a result there, people. Just by coming to that lock and having a throw. There's a guy pole fishing down there as well. Didn't seem as though much action, action on that one. And then I was fishing just way down there. So that's the lock system. Beautiful evening. Let's crack on. We've got more fish to fry tomorrow night. Uh oh. That took 25 minutes, that uh, 10 minutes casting. Right boys, I've moved from that canal. I've come back up and thought, where can I try and catch some roach? And I spoke to Andy, who owns Watmore Farm, or Watmore Fishery, and I uh, thought, I had heard on the grapevine, there's some good roach coming out. Well, I think I'm glad I made the phone call, because even if I don't get them today, I'm going to come back and have another go. Some of these roach are £1.4, £1.8, and bigger. So we're going to give it a go. There's always an outside chance of a carp. Lots of small roach, apparently, if I can catch them. So it'd be nice to finish off for you guys, just to catch you something, because it was a tough day yesterday. I lucked out with that pike, and I'll tell you what, a day here is better than a day chimney sweeping on my roof. Let's get going. So match rod, five pound line. I've got a waggler float here, I'm just gonna show you people. Waggler float there, locking shot either side of it. And that's a self writing float. See, it's got a, its own weight there. So you can adjust with a couple of small shot there. I'm fishing really slow sinking. I haven't got any other shot down there, but I have been plumbing the depth. And I just clipped that on. That's a plum bob, plum weight. You just put it on your hook and then just go out and, and you get your float depth. So I'm about, I think, maybe six inches off the bottom. I'm fingers crossed, I won't get pestered by a carp, but I'm fairly sure they'll find it sooner or later. I'll try maggots first and see if we can't catch you guys a few roach. First, get some ground bait in the water. I don't have a lot of bait. I've got some weird stuff, let me show you. I've got these things called natural six mil jelly pellets, which I've had in and out of the freezer for God knows how long, they're ever so soft. And I've got these called extreme hook pellets. Wow, they're going to be good, aren't they? Four mil and six mil, but that's interesting because when I popped it, I've never even opened this. I can't. How does it, oh, oh, there you go. It's actually, look, a tub within a tub. So you've got four mil pellets in there. And what's the other ones? No, six mils in there, four mils in there. They're very, very soft. So it's pretty much the same as using maggots. It smells 
I've found something that is worse than squid on your fingers. Just touch this stuff. It absolutely rinks. Rinks? Not only that, it reeks of fish paste. Well, it's krill, isn't it? Well, I'll give those a go as well. Look, I've got anything I'll throw in here, it's probably going to get eaten. A little bit of ground bait mix, what I've got left over from yesterday. Fishing maybe just a rod length out, and I'm just going to see what I can catch, guys. Let's get myself set up. First cast out, boys. <laughs> I was looking around. Oh, there we go. I'll bring this one up to you. There we go, look, people. Really nice roach here. First cast. Be interesting to see what else we get. But at least we're off the mark. I've thrown a handful of ground bait close in here as well. You never know, there might be something coming in. Taking a look. And uh, handy if I could uh, cast without getting the microphone lead tangled up. I'm going to try this again. I just threw a little pellet of ground bait out there. I'm not the world's greatest on feeding. Either too heavy or too light is where I normally go. Let me just see if we can get one on the camera for you. Right, overcast. Sink the line, I've got a nasty little wind here. No, not me, not me, on the lake. It's just dragging. I mean, it's fine if you're ledgering, it's not a problem. But when you're float fishing, you get, especially on a sort of circular lake like this, you can get a, a flow going around. Oh, I missed that one. Where is he? Smith's here somewhere. I can, I can sense it, I can sense he's here. Probably, I can't put the camera that side, which will be handy because I'm striking into my microphone lead here. And I've got no shot down. I'm letting the maggot go down on this side. The float is cocked, okay, it's set. But the maggot's sinking very, very, very slowly down there. And I'm hoping it just settles about six inches or three inches off the bottom where there might be a decent, decent roach. Because you run the risk of small fish, two or three inches long, but that's just the way it is. I'm gonna move that, that's some weird stuff. There's some other stuff I've got here. 2.3 millimeters, as if the fish know, as if the fish care whether it's 2.3 millimeters. Pellets, carp, bream and tench. Carp, bream and tench, hang on a minute. There's no mention of roach there, that's not very nice, is it? Oh, there's a fish, that's a small one. And it is indeed. Another nice roach. Well, this is a bit faster than it was on that canal. And what you want to do, people, is get yourself a small diameter disgorger like this. You slide it around the line, pop the hook out, pop the fish back. We've been using the same maggot. That wind is so annoying. I don't know what I do with this stuff. Ideal for cupping, catapulting, or PVA bags, so you don't damp it, I imagine. I think I might even have to come in closer here. You might be able to see it there, there's just a bit of drag, it's pulling that float through to swim. So if you bait on the left, there's no point letting it drag around here, there's no bait there. The fish will be way up into the wind. I'm just gonna, I've just seen the swirl down there. Bear with me a second. I might have missed him, but it's definitely something has stirred up the food down there. I dropped a ball of ground bait and some loose feed down there. Fish has come in and I feel there's gonna be some more coming in later on. So I've sat right back and I've dropped my ground bait. Let's move this up a bit. Just over the edge here. I always do this, a couple of handfuls of ground bait, a few maggots, whatever's go in there and I just sit back and I fish away like I'm doing catching these roach and then suddenly you'll see a swirl come up around there or a shape, big shape drift in there and I've seen a carp come in there 
I'm just trying to wait and see if I want to come in and see if I can get it on the camera for you. There's one down there now. Are you going to see three fish? Three fish, guys, digging and digging and digging. I don't know if you're going to see those, if I lean out any farther. One, two, I think there's four carp came in there. Look at them digging that up. One of those is about eight pounds, nine pounds. Look how they stirred it all up, people. Now there's only one thing I've got to do now. I've got to bring the roach rod in, put a bit more feed in there, and just wait till that batch comes around again and lower a bait in there. They probably won't be easy to catch, but it's worth a shout. Okay, I've got the Avon quiver here. Five pound line, well, I think it is. Small barbless 14 and a small shot there. Don't ask me what size it is. I've got trouble even seeing it. Even more trouble trying to pinch it on the line. I'm going to go with about three maggots, assuming they can see these maggots. And they're just plain white maggots left over from yesterday. The thumbnail you can see here is the cause of hitting it with a hammer when working for Michael Pullen's totally awesome outdoor show, building bushcraft camps and things. So I'm going to put a little bit of feed in, a few of these, oh there he is. Now just make sure my rod top's clear, which it's not. And I'm just going to check my drag and then I'm going to wind up very, very shallow like this. And just, oh, he saw me move. And just leave it laying down there. I'm just going to hold that there. Now I'm holding this slightly to one side, so the line's down. If I lower it vertically, straight down, they might see the line. This way the line should come up in a curve there to the rod top. Basically, although I've got a quiver tip. Oopsie! <laughs> that was a carp strike. Sorry about that, Mr. Rose. <laughs> that was a carp strike. So now that tells me that the roach have moved in on the ground bit as well. I'm not going to throw him back in the stream, I'm going to throw him back slightly over the side. And that one took four maggots, so the roach are definitely feeding. But I feel I'm going to have trouble catching a carp if I want one. Because I think the roach is going to take everything that's coming in down there. I need to see the carp almost come in and take that bait. This can be a very amusing and time consuming way of fishing. All of a sudden you realise you've been doing it for an hour, you haven't caught anything. But because you're seeing fish, let's come off to the side. I'm holding it across my fingers like this as well. That's how I saw that bite rather than... I uh, felt the bite before I even saw it on the rod top. But you basically need three or four, two carp maybe, competing together. If they're coming together, then you've got a good chance of getting the hook up. That's about right. That's quite close there. You can also watch the bow in the line. I'd say there's at least four carp down there, people. But listen guys, they're match fished here and they're pleasure fish, so they do know what fishing line and hooks are. Now they've gone away again. I almost need trouble here is when you look over there and see them, they, they actually heard, the, where I clonked the chair, they heard the vibration there. There's one so close here, it's ridiculous. These things, look, they've just gone to mush. I mean, maybe they're out of their date. I've only had them three years. Fish might as well have them. Puts a bit of smell in the water. In fact, I wonder if I could make a paste out of that. Oh, well, yes, that's better. Very expensive paste, I have to add. I mean, if I put... This is how you've got to think outside the box, people. There's carp down there, so watch that rod top smith. Really keep an eye on that, because it's liable to go in the water. I'll put... Bit of ground bait in there as well. God, this stuff stinks. Absolutely stinks. The problem is if you use small baits when those carp come in, you will get small roach, and hooking the small roach will spook the carp. Put them on red alert, as it were. This might just make a usable paste.
while I wait for that rod to fold. Oh, it's carp all over it. This tip's going round in a minute, boys. Hopefully you'll be able to see the bite. Bite, it ain't going to be a nibble, I can assure you, if that rod goes. Yeah, there's fish there. It's gradually coming along as a paste. And there's a, there's a fish that's about nine pounds right by me. Right, let's try a piece of this paste. Oh, they're all over it, boys. I'm going to put the paste down. They are all over it. I'm just going to wait one fish about nine pounds, ten pounds. This is my roach fishing trip, by the way. This is how it's degenerated. There's four carp down there. Five, six carp. There is six carp in there. Surely one is going to disappear at a rate of knots. If I raise the rod top, Well, you see these fish there. I can't, I've got to back the rod off. I'm so close. The fish are so close. Well, they're all over it, boys. I put some more bait in. They're eating, scoffing the lot. But the problem is, you can sometimes end up with a fish bolting into the line and then just get a foul hook fish, and it takes you forever to land it. They are right down there. I don't know what it is they're eating, which one they're feeding on. I'm going to try a piece of my paste here. It's very, very, very soft. Do you know what? I think I need a bigger hook. I think I might need a bigger hook. Let's make the change. Oh, there's a fish there. I'm going to try again, guys. Big piece of paste and a bigger hook. I knew it was a matter of time, boys. Just a matter of time. And there we go. Right, I can't even tell you. I was barely on three feet of rod over the edge of the, uh, over the edge of the swim. Hopefully we got the take. I don't know, he's peeling me out here now, as you can see. Let that drag up a bit. So this is a change around from yesterday on the canal and that is the difference between what I call wild fishing and commercial fishing. If you want to pull on some fish you come to a place like this, you want peace and quiet and possibly much much harder fishing then obviously try what I would call the wild fishing. It's all got its place in the angler's year. On backwind as well. This is not a, well, it's not as big as I thought it would be. The well, horses seem to like it. Yeah, it might be a decent fish, you know. It might be a decent fish. And he's cut loads of trees down here as well. Makes a huge amount of difference. They will all grow up. All these are shooting already, and he's only just cut those back quite early. Anyway. I might have to switch off and come back to you guys. Well, we're getting them in now. I've got the camera back on. Because they scrap so hard when they're getting close here. You can't really count them as your own until they're in the net. And that's why I'm fishing this Avon rod with a quiver tip section. Maximum sport, maximum satisfaction guaranteed. Let's get the fish in the net, Graham. Please get the fish in the net. It was a long day yesterday on that canal. A long day. Here we go. Christ, he only gets in. Only just goes in. About eight pounds there, guys. But a nice one. Just sliding back. Oh, one last look. And there he goes. Sweet, as they say. Now, I might try a bit more bait in there. And then, have a go for roach. Well, I've had a few more roach. 
That's amazing. That rod just fell off of there, that bucket then. And the clonk of the reel went through this board and those fish shot off. So what I might do, just out of a point of interest, word baited for the roach, I'm going to throw out a piece of this paste. It's gently, sometimes fish will take on the drop. And then I'll touch legend with a line across my finger. Also you can, when it's not windy, you can watch a bow in the line. Oh, <laughs> dear, dear Lord alive. <laughs> you know the same people. There's anglers and there's danglers. That's ridiculous. So where I've been feeding those roach out there, the carp have moved in. And this one took on the drop. Goodness me. A bit different from that canal. Let's see how big this is. About the same size, six pounds. I'll get low on battery because I didn't charge up from yesterday, people. I'll click off and get the fish a little bit closer. Well, I've got to say this is a... Uh, give me an idea to maybe... Look, I'm not buying these expensive stuff. Don't you worry. It makes me wonder because I do very, very well with ground bait paste like this moulded around the hook, you see? Just one shot there. I smear a bit of it up the line. I'm wondering about shrimp paste, people. I used to use it years ago. I haven't used it since goodness knows when. Let's see if I can get another one on the drop touch ledgering. You just watch the line where it enters the water. You basically, you don't see the quiver tip move at all. I'm feeling the line tighten. And that one, oh God, as soon as I cast out there, you want to see down here. I'll just take the polaroids off. Now you might be able to see them, but there are f there's, there's fish right under my feet. One coming in close, boys. I have to wind right up there. And do you see where he is? They turned off. Turned off. He's going to come in from the other side, I feel. Come in from the right hand side of the swim. Sometimes it's circle off here. Go back around and come in that way or vice versa. They like to use a cover. You see this weed? They just come around the edges of the margins and you might be able to see the white patch of ground bait I fed in there. I think what I've got to do is make some more paste bait up with that um, red stuff in it. Let's just lob this out where the roach swim was. Out about there, let's see if there's anything out there. And that's all I'm doing. I've got the line going across his finger, back down there and underneath. And I just keep winding occasionally, just if there's a bow in the line, I want to pull it tight, you know. So when they, they pull the other way, I can feel it. And what also happens, a lot of small fish, look at the state of my fingers. A lot of small smith, smith? A lot of small fish will be, I can't get smith out of my brain, will be nibbling at something, say the size of my thumbnail, nibble it down, I can't, we'll still push them out of the way and take it. It's a fish just eating bits of foam or rubbish or something there. There's loads of foam coming down and he's like eating the bubbles, I don't understand that. Two of them. What is it they're eating? Look at that, Look at that. there's no like foam or bubbles coming all the way down here in a line. See the line of foam? And they're off there. Oh, here we go, roach. Roach to camera, as they say. Now, there's some big roach in here. This is just, I've got to call this a roach. It's turning that way. A nice little roach against the sunshine. It's good to catch, pulls the float under. It gives you a bit of sport. I'm using, so you know, three maggots here. Don't think that I don't think they're too fast. I may be wrong. All right, there we go again. I don't know, in all, all my life, I don't think I've seen them taking foam like that off the top. I don't know what they're doing. It's beyond me. Look, one, two, even the duck's eating it. That's weird. 
whatever that is, the duck's eating it. And down there, I've got to stand up and have a look. What is it they're eating? What is all that foam? The ducks are eating it. Bloody hell, there's a good fish there too. What are they eating? Oh, he didn't like the float. Ah, it's a very slightly bigger roach. A swinger, yes, it is a slightly bigger roach. I have to say, guys, that's more like it. That's a bit more like it. That's a nice fish. Show you this one. We've got this 645 to Dubai screaming overhead. And there you go. That's a, that's a nice roach, very, very fat. But not a real, real biggie, but still pretty good. I've got one on plain ground bait paces time, boys. Slow sinking out in the roach swim. Got a few more roach. This guy, as you can see, it's on a one way at the moment. I cannot do anything, the rod's whacked over and he's tracking out of here. Holy smoly, gotta get him turned. I've got that sort of twanging ping that he might come off. That is, just so you know, I've finished that uh, krill, I think it was, that awful red stuff's all over my fingers. I just mulched up my own old ground bait paste and boom, straight away. I've put a load of maggots down in here as well. So hopefully some that we might get a chance in there and I've had about another dozen small roach, but I haven't had any of the big roach. Oh, nice fish, nice fish, nice fish. Say no more, Graham. We just keep this one coming this way. Would be nice. I feel he's gonna I feel he's gonna take off in a minute. This is a nice fish. Now you see the net. So I'll wet the net first, guys. This is a nice common. This is a nice one. What such a turnaround. What a good result. Decided to come over to what more of the roach. This is a big roach, isn't it? I must have had 20, 30 roach now. Now, tip him over. Sometimes you don't like it when you put it right over low. And then come back the other way. we go. Predominantly common. So I've seen a couple of mirrors in here down on that ground bait patch. Oh, okay. no, he's not ready boys, he's not ready. He's not ready. Come on. Not ready. Still feels like he might be one of those that ping off all fishermen know. After you caught a few, you think, I don't know how this one's hooked, actually. It could be a pinger. No, he's not having it. He's got to get tired in a minute, surely. Goodness me, I'm getting tired. I'm not sure he's in. Oh, God. That's, that's got to be very close, too. Very, very close to the magic figure, boys. Now, here we go, getting back in one. And there he goes. Let's let him recover. Well, load of roach and free carp. I'll tell you what, it's looking good. Boys, something different here. I nearly wound it through the rod rings. This is something different. I believe this might be the first one I've caught. There we go, really nice. Look at that perch. That's a nice little perch, isn't it? Now these are put in here to hopefully eat a lot of the fry. Let me just get hold of him properly. And hopefully you can see his fin up there. Now you can see he's put in there for the fry. And apparently they're going to get really big in here now, so that's nice to get perch. Something different. Oh, locked and loaded, boys. This one has given me a lot, a lot of trouble. It's a carp, it's not a roach. It's trying to get me in the side rushes and I'm trying to keep as much 
power on as I can. See if we can, I'm gonna click this off boys. Just wanna fight this fish properly. It's gonna dump me in those rushes if I'm not careful. I'll click it off a second and come back in because I'm nearly, nearly out of battery. You got him in. It's got to go about, I'm thinking, oh, about 12 pounds, 13 pounds. Hey, <laughs> what a session I've had, what a good job I moved. Brilliant, time to back up guys. Well, I have a few casts on the road, shall I? What a beaut, that's a real nice lump. Well boys, I'm still catching roach. I'm switching between carp and roach, still catching them here. And listen, apparently here at Watmore, the roach are on the increase. So there's a good chance of getting something over a pound if you work at it. That's, that's what they're telling me anyway. So I'm gonna come back, give it another go. I had a great time, been getting roach and stuff like that. Brilliant with the carp close in, a few more casts and off home. Oh my God, I've just seen what looks like a big roach on the surface there. Quite a bit of movement on the surface. I've shallowed up to about a foot deep now. About 15 inches, something like that, about 15 inches deep. And, and that's where I'm picking the roach up, look, just like this. But that shot slipped. So there's my float, okay, there's my float. And there's my bait, what's left of it's chewed, so. 15, 18 inches, seems to be doing the trick. A few more casts, and I'm gonna have to go. Oh, oh, oh. That ain't a roach. Oh dear. Match rod. Two and a half pound bottom, and it's not a roach. Oopsie. Oh, I just pulled the camera over. That shows you with that uh, spraying those maggots and the coarse pellets regularly. Pulls everything in, not just the roach. I don't think it's a really big carp. It's not. On a match rod, brilliant sport. It's just wing. Well, I'm going to close out now, boys. I've had 30, 35 roach. Just in a couple of hours, three, three not even three hours yet. What, six carp to about 12, a perch, and some beautiful sunshine. So thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now you know how to chimney sweep. You know how to struggle on one of the canals. <laughs> it's fishing, folks, it's fishing. And you know how you can catch on a commercial. So I showed you some fish at the end of the day. Don't forget, on both channels, TA Fishing and TA Outdoors, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and then you don't have to get hours and hours, you know, spend looking for, have they got another film up? If we put a regular film up, whichever day it's on, because we sometimes do a midweek upload, you'll get it. We'll see you guys next time. I hope the fishing is as good as this. Oh yeah, I don't sweep the chimney until next year. Result. <laughs>